Um, no, so Josh wrote a nice note today asking an unanswerable question, which is, I know, one of your favorite kinds, which goes to whatever the harmonic balance is between regulation and free markets. And they've sort of, and then they, with the obvious aspects of some version of trans, whatever that, whatever those rules are. I'm not going to even throw my suggestions out. I was going to start to say things like transparency. Do you believe there's any rule? So I'll use that as my launching off point. But do you believe there's any rule that exists right now in the securities market that could be changed that would benefit both the every every relevant stakeholder? Is there a changeable? Forget fantasy land. Is there an existing rule that could be changed that would help? That would benefit retail investors. Um. Sure. I can think of probably a dozen things that could um, that uh, that should be changed and that could benefit retail investors. I mean, we can we can list them off or we can go through some of them. You know, the first first and most important is that um, the the system of of the, the current system that we have that regulates leverage is outdated it's archaic and the security system that regulates leverage in the securities marketplace is you know 40 50 years old um in the futures marketplace it's let's call it 20 years old 20 25 years old it's it's infinitely better than the securities even though the two regulatory bodies don't talk to each other span margining is better than traditional sec margining and essentially that's what regulates leverage and the, the leverage on the leverage on the security side is so inefficient today that it makes no sense you have a stock trading at a hundred dollars i mean the simplest explanation i can give is you have a hundred dollar stock you want to buy which is the average price let's just call it you want to buy a thousand shares, it's a hundred thousand dollars. And so if you have a fifty thousand dollar account, you have to basically put up fifty thousand, borrow fifty thousand to trade a hundred thousand dollars worth of stock, which gives you a, one position and one underlying. It's insanity. Uh the, the margin requirements for equities make no you, sense. Because part of my question is it's gotta be changeable. Yeah, so, so it's changeable to change the requirements and make them more in line with reasonable requirements. Because, you know, remember when these rules were written, there was, you know, there was, I don't know, five day settlement. There was no, there was no risk. Involved. There was no risk controls. You know, I mean, we control risk now on, you know, 70 on, on 70 million options in a matter of 30 seconds for hundreds of thousands of customers. And yet we have these archaic um, leverage rules for securities that require you put up 50 percent of the capital, which basically makes stocks obsolete in a traditional sense. And sure. this and the regulators have completely missed that. So the first thing is the regulation of leverage is outdated. It's it's okay. it's pretty idiotic at this point, and and the levels required to hold positions make no sense whatsoever in a world where we can monitor risk instantaneously. It makes no sense at all. That's so securities regulations for oh, leverage. The leverage update. Yes, and leverage modernization. And, and, and the and the model already exists on the future side. They can just ship over the risk models, and we'll have it all in place in in 24 hours. Like it's a piece of cake. That's one thing. So the risk. Other things are have to do with you know the the ridiculous rules about um, about order routing. You know, and and you know how we get orders to high frequency market makers that are essentially you know 10 to 20 times better than routing to exchanges. And so just the ability to fill orders on a um, uh, on almost like a direct HFT basis needs to be rewritten those rules and um, they have to the regulars need to realize that the exchanges don't work anymore and the, the markets are efficient because you know the exchanges 
the, nope. the bypass that was built over the last 10 years. Essentially, yes. In the last 10 to 15 years, we've built a bypass to exchanges that works better than the exchanges. And it's it's you know, that's the future. Next thing is we have to get rid of pattern day trading because it makes no that's the most ridiculous rule in the history of this business. And no customer should be restricted from closing a position or making a trade or reducing risk because they ran out of you know day trades to make. It's idiotic. That's from 1999. Then we have to get rid of multiple regulatory bodies. Why do we have two regulatory bodies or, or you know, three regulatory bodies or whatever it is? You know, it, that makes no sense. Why do we have different people regulating different? Um, so we can't even commingle our funds, you know, to a single net lick. Different agencies in different jurisdictions for different requiring functions. different amounts of capital for the exact same position makes no sense whatsoever. And then the fifth thing which is, and I'm just on a rant here, but the fifth thing is, you know, it's inexcusable not to have regulatory clarity around digital assets, given the size of that asset class at this point. It's, again, it's just a gross, it's gross negligence on the part of the various regulatory bodies in this country. They're, they're overpaid, they're only looking for political, some kind of political upside, and they're, they're not working um, for the individual investor on any level. Now, I can go on and on because there's a million more things that they don't do correctly. But, but, but that's a good five pack. We'll work with that. Yeah, I mean, I that's for starters. Five, and we can open on those five. So we'll just, we'll give you leverage reform. We'll give you pattern day trading reform. We'll give you uh, regulatory integration. So they don't have multiple, regular, multiple sure. jurisdictions, all those things. Of that, how, but how much value, like if you could change all those things, how much value would that add? Is that meaningful improvement or marginal improvement? No, 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 no. It's, it's huge because if done correctly, firms like Tasty and other firms like us can reduce, you know, right now we have to serve multiple masters, okay, on the regulatory side. We have to serve, we get audited by every exchange. So there's 20 exchanges. We get audited by every regulatory body, you know? And so we have this massive amount of infrastructure and cost from just from regulators, which is ridiculous because they're all they're trying to do is create revenue through fines or revenue through fees. And if they were all combined and there was one master, we would save a lot of money of which we can then reduce cost to customers and improve improve everything and they are limiting our ability to you know to route to more efficient better fills more efficient execution everything like that and so you know it's so, okay i got it so i got all this so now let's assume the problem you're describing is pervasive across every sector of the american commercial government interface yeah sure it is air transportation permits sure. oil permits sure Aviation thing. I mean, you need, fire. you need, I'm not saying you don't need regulation, but you know, every once in a while, here, here's the problem. We change, we change administrations every four years. We, we are constantly in a state of flux. Nothing, you know, it's very easy to go through 20, 30, 40, even 50 years of a legacy regulation that with technology moves fast. So the, fast. So fast. That, no, so I would fast. say that this is an issue everywhere. This is an issue. I'm thinking whether you're an airline or a broker yeah. or a hell a doctor, like and, the data reality is real time hypersonic and, and, and the infrastructure is Model T. And the political system moves slow. And, you know, we have presidents in their 70s and 80s that don't even use computers. And so we have this massive, you know, we have this, this speed at which technology is changing, you know, everything from finance to every other industry sector. And yet the regulatory bodies are lagging behind because, you know, A, they don't have any technology, B, they can't afford the smartest people that can create that technology, and C, they don't have the directions from- What if, what if, what if, you, cre what if you made a job that you paid a million bucks a year for 50 people? to be regulatory sure. uh, modernization experts sure. and form teams and take on things. I'm all for so, it. 
That sounds like a reasonable idea. I wonder if countries have done that in the past. They usually do like after world wars and things, I guess. I think there are countries that have, you know, that that can move at, at, at a completely different pace and that can get you to, you know, the, the problem that most other countries have is that they they don't have the same kind of um, um, their their ecosystem isn't as mature as ours and hasn't been annuitized to the point where there's where they have the same amount of free cash flow that we have. So we have this massive and this just giant amount of oh, free cash. Right. Yeah. And 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 so and we've we've learned how to, you know, annuitize that cash flow and how to how to monetize, you know, the system. And so um and nobody wants to give up their position, so it's 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 difficult. But you're saying you're saying the abundant cash flow of the mature and sort of well-designed monetization system with swaps and all these things that that reduces the incentive to have a more efficient overhead through regulatory efficiency because there's a lot of money flying around. Exactly. And I, I believe that, you know, so the U.S. is under less um, we have there, there's. There's a lot more pressure around the world to catch up, and in the U.S., you know, um, it's it's very difficult to knock us off that pedestal because we're just so far ahead. You know, as far as the economy is just so far ahead, and 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 that's because we have this very efficient free market and market structure that works. And people people don't give it the credit it deserves, but it can be better, and with better regulators and and updated you know technology um and an updated regulate we could be so much better but the thing is you're saying that the filter for the regulators has to do with power accumulations of power and political points not a filter of an optimized capital market of course i mean look at gary gensler he's a perfect example you know these yeah, yeah, are exactly. these are they're they're everybody's out for you know to, for what's the next position, you know, you know, what's the what's gig. what's the next gig? Is it Treasury Secretary? Is it Chairman of the Fed? You know, whatever it is. But that's what everybody's out for. That it's just it has nothing to do with hey, let's just make the, let's make the hard decisions and make this stuff better, rather than. But then what that brings up my but that brings up my point, which is these are changes that cannot be made. Um, well, you know, if you get the strong if you get a strong person, you can make some changes, maybe. I don't know. Which of the, if there was one of the five you could change, which do you think is the most changeable today? I think combining the regulatory bodies would be next to impossible. Um, I mean, obviously, getting rid of pattern day trading would be the easiest because that's such a ridiculously stupid rule that nobody could even defend it. It's an easy win. It's an easy win, to take an easy win because it can't even be defended in court. You know, that's not that's. Um, I mean. Crypto regulation is another easy win. There's not a single person in the whole country, including all the crypto firms and every financial, you know, financial service firm wants crypto regulation. There's nobody that would argue with it. So you have crypto regulation, getting rid of pattern day trading are easy. Changing the getting rid of one of the two regulatory bodies is incredibly difficult. Updating the existing leverage is very difficult as well because very difficult. It's very difficult because for firms to um, replace their legacy back ends that have been in place since, you know, like for a firm like Goldman Sachs, which probably has an upgrade. 24 months, like multi-billion dollar oh, undertaking. 24 months would be, you know, it's probably five years. You know, it's five like years. it's like converting. It's like converting to all electric cars. So I think that, you know, those are the the changing changing stuff on the regulatory side is is quite difficult i think making the routing easier getting rid of all the restrictions around routing to the best marketplace um i think that's doable not as easy as not quite as easy as getting rid of patent day trading not quite as easy as getting um adding crypto uh regulatory controls but that's also doable so three of those five things are absolutely doable two are a little more difficult but need to get done Mm -hmm. 
when people say to you that, that when people take the frustration of, of bad regulations or duplicate, duplicit, uh, duplicitous, I guess would be the word, um, repetitive functions, and they say, well, this regulation is bad. Do you want, do you sympathize with that? With the more for the more primitive, I do. I do to an extent. When people, when people argue, when 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 they lump things together, like and they're just stupid. Like when they lump science together with regulation, you know that really bothers me. You know, like so. Um, uh, you know, so maybe it's environmental that bothers me. It, maybe it's you know. Um, uh, maybe it's pandemic related or biochemical. Th those things bother me when they when people don't think like, you know, that stuff. There there are certain we do require, you know, the government to get involved with certain things and to regulate certain things. But when it comes to um, when it comes to a lot of the business stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm clearly not, you know, um, I want less regulation, not more. Why not make the regulation simply be some version of a constant capital requirements? Like, well, isn't the best regulator some version of retained risk for any market? I mean, that's how the security synthetic or otherwise synthetic or otherwise. That's how the securities business operates. I mean, there is a need to there's there is, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's how we operate. Um, uh, essentially, that's how all you know financial services is that operate. The best regulator. It's it's the best risk manager. Okay, fair enough. Regulation being a different thing. Yeah. Regulation. Yeah. Being, what's the distinction? I mean, I, I mean, just to have, what's what, what's the distinction? I, I mean, you know, having enough capital doesn't protect. You know, um, like like an example would be the whole FTX scandal. You know, there was plenty of capital there to to cover the risk. But there was nothing there to cover the fraud. Mm -hmm. So the regulated is more fraud related that that, that is the in your mind in terms of that. Um, whole, that yeah, I mean, well. yeah, there are certain things that need to be in place to protect the integrity of of efficient markets. So, like, you have to protect the integrity of, you know, um, uh, manipulation, illegal manipulation, things like that. You and know, securities should actually be rep attached to legal instruments to ongoing enterprises with some term sure, sheet. Sure, right. and and I mean it's 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 hard enough as it is, um, you know. In and you see this, you see this all over, and you kind of wonder, you know, like how much of whatever we hear is a house of cards, you know, how much of it is real, you know. You you start to, know, right? We work. Yeah. I mean, it, the list goes, you know, I mean, it goes right. to to that guy. What's his name? You know, in, in India, Adani recently, you know, Adani, Adani is a big, big, that's yeah. a big show. There. Yeah, but it goes it goes the whole way. You know, it goes to, you know, presidents inflating their value of their assets. It goes to, you know, business people lying about their, you know, their um, avenue growth projection. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. You know, making up, you know, making up clients, making up two thousand, two million people. We or just goes, sold them. Yeah, we just sold two million whatever widgets. Yeah. Or or Wells Fargo opening, you know, four million accounts that didn't exist. Or Volkswagen getting seventy five miles to the gallon. Exactly. And so the, the, those are all, you know, yeah. I mean, we we that that's where that's where. That's you, what I'm saying. That's what regulators do in your mind. Yeah. They're the fraud barrier. They're not the risk barrier. Yeah. Which I think, because I would say that the SEC would argue that they're the fraud and the risk barrier. The, I, the I don't think the risk barrier is fair because I think it's impossible to regulate um, risk on a public, private, or individual level. I don't think you can regulate risk. And I think when you try to regulate risk, you actually make it worse, not better. Because it's it's like imagine trying to regulate risk at a casino. What would you do? You'd push everybody into the slots where the odds are actually worse. You know, like so. So you make every slot machine a quarter slot machine. So you push every player into the slots, and the next thing you know, you have eighty three percent chance of winning as opposed to, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, your your loss is 
your I loss just, per I, pull is. But, but I'm only running a quarter a hand, so I feel more risk managed. Exactly. Exactly. I'm limiting everybody to 25 cents. Exactly. Your drawdown 17% as opposed to blackjack, which is 2 or 3%. But yeah. you have everybody betting, you know, 25 cents a hand, exactly the whole thing. It doesn't make any sense. So you can't really regulate risk on any level. But the, but obviously they attempt to do that. That's part that's pattern day trading. Yeah, that's I right. Mean, that, that is pattern day trading. That, but that's what's wrong with, you know, that's what's wrong with all that stuff. Yes. And so you would need to persuade them that risk is managed in the private sector using capital. And, re and fraud is regulated by the government using regulation. In a very broad sense, 100%, yes. Because I actually feel like the regulators very much focus on risk more than fraud. Like Sarbanth, like Dodd Frank. But that's, a, that. that's, a, that's just a, a misunderstanding of, where, of what risk really is. That's what it is, you know. That, that's, Me misunderstanding it or that's Dodd Frank misunderstanding it? No, 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 that's, that's, that's regulators and or politicians not understanding risk thus making a document that they believe manages risk but it's a it's a blind man leading a monkey to of a, course to a, to a rat with a coffee can the, the way i always explain it and i explain it the same way is we don't like you get in your car and you're going to drive somewhere you cannot control the risk of what like you can't control the risk of what somebody else what somebody else could do that could hurt you like driving the wrong way you know or being drunk or something else you could only control your side which is putting on your seat belt which is not texting while you're driving and i think so so when we we tried to regulate like so so in other words we can't really regulate risk very effectively because we can't control what somebody else may or may not do but um you know but but that's that's another example that's all that is market gets like how inefficient i'm just i'm some this is like a market gets 50 percent better 20 percent like like you're saying it gets a lot better i'm just trying to think i'm just interested it'd be interesting across the board just because i've been studying yeah. the aggregate so so i don't think the market gets i don't think that makes the market necessarily um go up or down what i do think it does is it it opens up the um it makes the game uh more attractive to more people which in effect is very healthy for the economy because it boosts liquidity and participants of course of if there's more participants there's more liquidity if there's more liquidity there's more money to be spent on to be spent on investing into the system you're you're much more apt to take um to make an investment if you know that there is an opportunity to have a liquidity event at some point down the line on that investment you're going to be very reluctant to do something where there's no way out of course that's the big joke with india speaking of adani adani uh it's it, india stands for india or no invested not going to do it again or never doing it again there's a there's a, a joke in london about making sure you do not put money into india they call it a lobster pot yeah yeah, it's there's there's um, and that and that's not that's not an issue with just India. That's all over the world. So people come to where it's, you know, where the markets are most liquid and where there's where they it, pay the contract law pays. Yeah, I have a position on right now in a Russian ETF that I put on when the war in Ukraine broke out and the fund is now been disbanded because the they can't liquidate the fund so they're marking it at zero until someday in the future when they may be able to liquidate the assets of the fund because they can't sell anything in russia right now because there is no way to sell anything or to take it out of the country this is an issue yes it's a perfect example of what happens when there's no liquidity so now who in their right mind would invest anything 
in Russia. And then how do you grow that economy when there's zero investment? You can't. They're dead. It's over. Like Putin, Putin was just too freaking stupid to realize that and basically took down the whole country for the next two decades. So, you know, this is this is these are real issues. I always felt that the longer the regulation was, like the longer the documents were as a journalist, the worse the regulation was. That the best regulations could be done in one or two pages because there were more principles and values. Like there are more infinitely applicable, like whatever. I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. This is goes back to the discussion we had a few months ago on the 30 minute board meeting and the no PowerPoints and the death by meetings or or growth by no meetings, all of the above. I couldn't agree more. And so the two page restriction on all regulatory decrees, I think should go in, in the in the 30 minute board meeting book. Sure. Gary Ginsler's last proposal that they just put in front of the um, House um, Finance Committee and they just have it now for review has 1680 pages. This is my point. It has 1680 pages. We have they two, did it with Dodd Frank. Yeah, so we have two people that. reading it. It's a waste of humanity. 1680 pages. You know, of of course there's going to be stuff in there that, you know, nobody gets to. It's ridiculous. And then somebody three years from now is going to open some new business because they're going to discover something on page 1,344 subsection 4J that permits them to do some cockamamie thing we haven't even don't even know is in there. It's quite possible. I mean, I wouldn't read it. <laughs> so some point a couple of years from now, I'm going to get, you know, a $25,000 fine from from a regulator. And they're going to say on page 932, column C, you didn't follow this rule. And I'm like, what? You like, yeah, you got to pay your 44J. You're like, what do you mean your 44J? Exactly. exactly. Got to pay it, Tom. I know. And that's going to happen. hundred. I'm 100 percent sure. You know, it's like, you know. What, 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 you know, I, I think don't know. Everybody's going to have to pay with 1,680 pages. It sounds like they got it. They probably put out enough landmines for everybody. Yeah. But that's the joke that we live in, right? It should be two pages. Two pages. I don't even know if there's two pages worth of content in there. I know. I could almost do it in a paragraph. <laughs> yeah. But we still welcome the regulators because fraud is a blight that we cannot allow to sustain our fine uh, marketplace. Well, the funny thing is when you look at, you know, when, you know, I, I, it's very difficult to blame regulators like, you know, you know, like of all the things I blame regulators for, there's certain things that, that, that are difficult. To, like, I don't think in the case of, you know, um, Elizabeth Holmes, you know, I'm not sure where the regulators. Well, the FDA could have been in there. The FDA could have been in. That that's a tough year. one. That's a tough one. In the case of FTX. You know, again, they weren't regulated. Um, I'm going to lay that. You just said it's a breach. Of, it's a gross negligence. The lack of crypto regulation. The the lack of crypto regulation, but they, but it didn't exist. The negligent part was that they didn't have crypto regulation. I'm not sure that they could have done anything. You know, the, with respect to FTX itself, I'm not sure what could have been done because there was no regulation at that point. Um, but you know, th these are just. Yeah, and there's Bernie Madoff, Bernie Madoff, that guy, what's his name, tried to take it to the SEC for 10 years. There's a one famous whistleblower man from Boston. I forget his name. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, listen, it's it's it is fascinating. And um, uh, but I don't blame, you know, fraud is something very difficult to to catch. Especially when they're as good enough to do Theranos or that kind of jazz. It's not like some that's a skilled actor. Well, what bothers me, like with FTX and people don't say is like, you know, so SoftBank or whoever, well, I think it was SoftBank put in, oh, yeah. you know, three hundred million dollars at, you know, thirty billion dollar valuation. I mean, what are those guys doing? You know, the regulators aren't putting any money in. So and they yeah. have and they have twenty two year old kids trying to to figure it out. But like, what were those guys doing? I believe the story of our time. That if I was to publish a book about this era in the, in the Western capital markets, it, the story of our time, sir, is the story of negligence 
in the diligence process by the largest and most powerful institutions, facilitating a broad wave that circles the world to this day. Didn't you write a book called Greedy Bastards? That was different. <laughs> but this those are greedy. Book. Those are greedy bastards too. They're the greediest. These people are the worst. But they, but they, you know, but... All right, that was good. Leave it in God's hands. I'm not here to administrate justice. I'm just telling you. I'm Tom Sosnoff. He's Dylan Radigan. It's Truth or Skepticism every Wednesday. We'll see you. Different topics every week. I don't know. What was today's topic? Fraud? Today's topic was we just we solved global financial regulations and you. The headline is Tom Sosnoff declares U.S. <laughs> stock market in Goldilocks scenario. That would never be my headline ever. All the Associated Press send it to the wires. Sosnoff is calling the market Goldilocks. See you next week, Mr. Radigan.